lead because they've hit five of their last six shots. And they're just terrific at the free throw line. North Carolina has shot itself in the foot from the line tonight. Hey, Dante Jones having another 2029 is seventh this year. Rashad McCann certainly wasn't Rashad McCann, the player that won the MVP award this year. The NIT worked for seven. Foul trouble. Reddick, the second best free throw shooter in the nation. They want him to handle the ball. If they have to foul somebody, they'd love it to be him. And there's the two-three foul line extended, so he can't give help. And then they like to release people, trying to get layups. Manuel trying to guard him, but not foul. Shot clock is at 16. I tell you, I like the way Duhon has responded to some poor performances. He's responded tonight, making big plays. There's another one he just made. Great feed, Horvath with the easy layup. That was created by Chris Duhon. Great vision. That's leadership, man. When you make big plays down the stretch, it's not just yelling and screaming. It's making big plays. Manuel to Noel, bounce pass along the baseline. Heels need points. Manuel open for three, did not want the shot. He did not want it. Scott will take it and miss. Dante Jones saved it and bounced it off of Scott. This will be a heartbreaking loss for Matt Doherty. In the last two games, they have had a supreme effort that have been able to, not been able to get into the winner's circle, losing the way for us, and tonight, a little bit trouble now. Seven down with a minute on the clock. Unless they can spring a miracle, it'll be five losses in a row. Sitting at 11 and 10, and as you said, Mike, two and six in the conference. Reddick moves the ball out under a minute to go, and now they're going to foul Dockery. And Duke? That's probably the best guy to we'll take him to the free throw line. Carolina played its heart out tonight, and Noel has emerged in the last couple of ball games as a go-to guy. He is tough, he can rebound, and he is shot much better than anybody would think. Shooting the rock brought to you by Rolling Rock. 19 points tonight, he's at 8 out of 13. A lot with some range on it. I'll tell you, Raymond Felton is absolutely sensational. And you're right, Mike, they played their hearts out tonight because they got Duke's best shot. Duke was so fired up for this basketball game because of the fact they're losing to Florida State and they were emotionally ready and Duha responded late in the game with big play. Dockery steps up. I tell you, that tells you a lot about his character because you would think a kid sitting in a pine a long time, a kid that's not known as a great shooter, would struggle there. He stepped right up with a lot of confidence. Came in shooting 58%, hits the first, the second, would make it a nine-point game, and he does. And gives some credit to Duhon coming off the bench tonight. 12 points and 10 assists. And big plays down the stretch. That's the difference. He made big plays when they needed them. Jawad Williams for three. He's fouled. Wow, that's a dumb play. Followed him out there, stopping the clock, putting him on the line. That's Horvath. There's more NCAA action coming your way. Midnight Eastern, Pepperdine, and Gonzaga. Gonzaga undefeated in conference play. Then tomorrow, two more ACC matchups at 7. NC State against Josh Howard and the Deacons. And at 9, Virginia will take on Maryland at College Park. Well, the question is, what has happened to Virginia? I liked them so much when I saw them earlier this year. You know, you mentioned Gonzaga. Mark Few, one of the hot names in coaching. Has done a fantastic job with that program at Gonzaga. When jobs open up, he's going to get some calls. Now, I think the officials are going to go over and take a look at the monitor to see if that was a foul beyond the three-point line, which we thought it was. One of them called it a two. They can check this legally. Yes, you are allowed to use the monitor in this situation. It definitely was a real fun. Guy's got to learn how to put that on. He's got to learn how to put that on. Come on, now, Come Mr. on Carl. Yeah. And utilize it to determine whether it is a two or three, and not just on a made one, but on a missed one as well. We're way up here now. We got to look at the replay. Let's see where he's. He gets put behind the line. Foul behind the line. Yeah, he's behind the line. You're still behind the line if you have not come down. He took off from outside the line, so it's going to be a three-point shot. You could use the monitor also for a scoring climate area, error, and also for the fact of determining who participated in the fight. As Mike Krzyzewski now talking to his kids, he's got to be proud the way they responded because they took also an unbelievable hit by North Carolina. It was up five here in the second half. Raymond Felton was absolutely brilliant. 
you've got to give some credit to North Carolina to come in here off of four straight conference losses. And here's what they were facing. Two and five in the ACC. They lose this game. They probably have very little chance of finishing in the top three, which was something they did forever before. And very little chance of uh, catching anyone in the top three, as well as Maryland and Wake Forest certainly have played. It's a huge game for Duke, too. They couldn't afford to fall to four and four. Exactly. Think about that streak. It was 37 consecutive years of the one, two, or three in the ACC. 31 consecutive years of 20 games or more, and 27 years in a row in the NCAA. It's I thought to... I thought the 37 straight years of being first, second, or third in this conference, as good as this conference has been, was the most remarkable statistic in college basketball. And it's hard to believe that they may go now. Looks like unless a miracle, two consecutive years without a postseason berth. Jawad Williams is the line for three. He made his first, missed the second. When I say postseason, I'm talking NCAA. Certainly have a shot in IT if they go 500. Williams now with 19 points. They cut the lead to seven. It's still a three-possession game with 40.2 seconds left. You know, that guard has got to build on it. it's very tough because after a while, you know, your morale gets really down. And you've got to build on the positive moments of a, of a game like tonight. You've got to take away and really get the young people to realize they're so close to getting to that winner's circle, losing a tough one to Wake Forest in here. Melvin Scott has just fouled out of the ball game. He reached around and fouled Reddick. And now we'll try to avoid the jinx because Reddick will go to the line. He has hit 42 straight, which is a school record. The ACC all-time record held by Virginia's Jeff Lamb. Well, he he once made it? 48 in a row. I made one time. I know you're not going to believe this. I really did one time. 51 in a row. I did. I know you're looking at me crazy. Nothing game competition. I did it with my wife and my daughter's county. <laughs> were you were you on a ladder above the basket? Or you talk, actually talking about free throw? Free throws, man. I think anybody could be a 75% free throw shooter if they practice. I think it's ludicrous that guys aren't. I agree with you. I think it's an area of the game. you got to concentrate. you got to focus. You should be able to look. But this guy has obviously practiced it. Reddick will go to the line. He is number two in the country, number one in the ACC. All he hits, 95.3%. They made him really think a lot about it. One of the best I've ever seen in the ACC is Mark Price. I mean, Price was incredible. He was great. And Mark Price was great at everything. He was a lot, he was a lot like Reddick. He could hit the long shot. Of course, he didn't have the three points. Hey, can we do this when a kid is as good as this to speed up the game? Let's just play the game and put the point in the book. I mean, put it in. Why make him shoot it? It's automatic. This is automatic. Come to the nylon. Oh! You did it. That one's on you. Oh, I'm so sorry, JJ. 43 in a row. The streak comes to an end. Jeff Lamp still has his record. Oh. Noel underneath tries to follow Horvath with a rebound to Reddick. That happens so often. Reddick tips it out to Duhon. Horvath ahead of the pack. And he's fouled with 18 seconds to go, and that ought to do it. I feel so bad for J.J. Stewart Scott. Stewart Scott. Oh, and Dan Patrick. Chris Stewart. His heels are going down. Here's what they'll have. A look back at Bob Knight's 800th career win tonight. Bob Huggins on the hot seat in Cincinnati. In our conversation with Steve Mariucci, our congratulations to him. I thought he was treated so shabbily in San Francisco, and now he gets the big deal in Detroit. Well, I think the way they treated him after he did a phenomenal job down there was really just a poorly done job in that front office. But you know what, 25 million? Hey, Steve, can I get a loan, man? I need some cash, Steve. Tom Izzo's got him all tied up. Oh, Izzo's going to be on cloud nine. His buddy coming to the Motor City. Well, here's Horvath now. This game is over, my friend. It's over. Duke gets a big win at home. 81-72. This is going to take Duke to 15 and 3, 5 and 3 in the conference for North Carolina. A crushing defeat after they play just about as well as they can. They'll go to 11 and 10, 2 and 6, and they still have to go back through the ACC and play eight more games. I think if there's one thing that comes out of tonight for North Carolina, obviously the great player David Noel, they found a player. But they also really have to find a way to coaching staff to get Rashad McCants to beat Rashad McCants. There's something obviously watching him play that the kid is fighting himself mentally. 
And the bottom line is he's got to respond in practice. He's got to earn the respect of his teammates and his coaches by giving a genuine super effort every time of practice. The only reason I know that, Mike, is reading it in the paper by some of the comments by his teammates. Somebody drew a very good parallel today, I thought, the fact that Vince Carter had the same kind of problems when he was a freshman under Dean Smith. They said Vince Carter eventually turned out pretty good. Not bad. The chance has such an upside, oh, such a future. But my hat is off to Matt Doherty for doing what he did. Yeah, I do. I, I, you got to have respect. And if you're preaching the fact that we want to play defense, and a guy's not giving the effort, he's got to go to the sideline. And he also said putting Noel in the starting lineup was a reward for everything that he was doing. And look how he has responded. It's been brilliant. And the only reason he's doing it is because he really wants to get the do the best he can do. He's in his corner 100%. He's not trying to penalize him. Buckner will come in for him, gets a hug from Mike Krzyzewski. So that's the kind of guy that gets a tap on the rear end. He said, that's what I expect out of you, my friend. He didn't give him any of this down there in Tallahassee. They're going to have a W. Mike Krzyzewski told his kids this week, this is not about North Carolina. This is not about the rivalry. This is about us, who we are as a team. What a great drive. Raven felt they cleared the court. has won six in a row in this series, 11 of the last 12. On the night when they retired Jason Williams' jersey, Duke beats North Carolina 83-74. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dick Vitale and our entire crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now to Dan Patrick and Stuart Scott. And uh, I had a friend one time that that said, "Why had uh, why had he become so popular after he became 85?" And he said, "Cause I outlived all those son of a bitches that didn't like me." <laughs> this is my favorite part. Here's Coach Knight with his team. Everybody jump around, jump around. Raise the roof. Yeah. Knight becomes the fourth division one men's coach to reach 800 wins. Uh, we had to bring out the chair video. The only active division one coach with more wins is uh, Mount St. Mary's Jim Phelan. Knight is now 79 wins behind Dean Smith for most wins in men's division one history. We'll go out live to his news conference a little bit later on. The latest large test for number six Louisville, 80th meeting with Cincinnati. And Kareem Johnson, we are. Neil yeah, will show you why momentarily Duhon. He's got 50 games as a starter. David Noel. Carolina by five, and then when Duhon did get in the game, well, he wasn't very good. <laughs> misses the J there, and then misses the layup. Here he had no points, two turnovers in 17 first half minutes. He might have to get used to the bench. Waning moments of the first half, Carolina on a nine nothing run, and freshman J.J. Reddick says, we need to do something. And that's something's hit a three right before half. 43-38 Carolina at the break. At the break, Williams' number is retired. And Grant Hill, look how injured he is. But it was really Jay Will's day. Honestly, uh, so all this is my coach. Coach K was the best coach I've ever had. And last time I played in this gym, we beat Carolina. Thank you. Bill Cartwright on line, line yeah. two, and the, the camera crazies aren't playing, and the team was in the locker room during the speech, but it seemed to work. Dante Jones there, and then Duhon here. How'd you do that? I've been selfish and just thinking about myself and about my shot and not the team. Today, I just threw myself in. I was just worried about the letters that was on my chest and just came out with a lot of emotion and just wanted to play hard. He responded well. I mean, he made that one shot he made, that little scoop. That was a huge, huge bucket for us. Now, Duhon, 12 points, 10 assists, third double-double of the season. The Dukies roll, 83-74. Spacing on offense, position on defense. Let's think. You weren't in position. You play defense with your feet, not your hands. Play with your feet. And when he passes the ball, you intercept it. And everybody in the crowd cheers like hell. Practice can be... Uh, accomplished in a limited time if you don't spend a lot of time talking. 
So I've tried to talk on the run. I've tried to talk while no, we're, hold it, hold we're it doing up. things. The more you keep him going toward the corner, the less problems we have with ball screen. I think 10 minutes is the limit that you do anything in practice. All right, right down here, five on five block out now. No game requires a kid to change his mind set as much as this game does. You get something into it that requires the people to change their mindset. It gets them to think like they're going to have to think in a game. Tanner, where was it? Show me where the ball was. All right, show me where you should have been. No, no. One step on the on the ball side of the bucket, right here. If you're where you should be, they don't get a bucket. You can't be in here with your back to the man. You've got to be in position so you're slightly open to the ball when you're here. And then you can recover or you can go pressure. What is the most important quality that one of your players can bring to practice to make them effective? I think concentration. Hey, you, you guys cannot lose presence of mind when you're playing. I mean, that play couldn't have gone over against a sixth grade team. You've got to keep concentration. This you're isn't a game of great plays. Run. It's a game of mistakes. And if you eliminate them, you have a better chance uh, of winning. And you eliminate errors by concentration. John, you don't need a dribble. The dribble costs you a basket. You've got to go into him, and you've got to get your butt into it. You've got to hit him. He is not going to hit you. Mickey didn't even jump. He walked you in here, reached over you, and got the rebound because you did not get your butt into it. How would you describe your offensive philosophy? Well, you know, it, it's far from democratic. Get yourself in position to screen. Either get on a high post and screen down or up, but get yourself where you can screen. I don't want you cutting, period. Let's let the shooters shoot and the rest of us play like hell on defense and pass the ball without making mistakes. If there's a mistake, I just don't want to let it go by. If you let that go, I think the kid doesn't realize that he may think he's playing well or he's screening well or uh, he's passing the ball well. I've always felt that, that, uh, that mistakes have got to be understood and recognized before you can correct them. If the ball is below the foul line extended, you're one step on the ball side of the bucket. That's it. We've been doing that for two years. I, there in anything. You come right here. You're the second guy. If you're, you got to take it away, you're right here. What am I going to say to you? No. What am I going to say to you? You came down here and turned around a full 360 degrees instead of paying attention where the ball is. Now, while you're here, here comes a guy driving that you never see. You cannot lose sight of the basketball. You challenge your players from time to time and, and get on them to do more, to be We're more productive. Is there We're a balancing you have to strike so that a kid plays zone. without fear of making a mistake? Well, I think kids have to know that you see them make good plays. They have to know that. Kyle, that was very good. You turned, you looked, and you drove. That was good. Three counts. And yet, again, I go back to that same thing. It's a game of mistakes. And if you don't bring out mistakes, then you're not going to get any better. I mean, I always tell kids, if I don't tell you you made a mistake, do you know you made a mistake? And the other thing I use is that if you're going to get better, you got to change. You either change or you're going to be a half-ass player forever. you got to change to play this game. How do you expect a kid to react? Well, I hope he's saying to himself, well, I'll be damned if I'm going to let him get somebody else to do it. I mean, I'm going to see it. I'm going to do just what he once done. You see, I don't think that a teacher can ever be a good teacher without going out on a limb from time to time. I mean, political correctness has no place in teaching. And if it has crept into somebody's teaching, uh, they better get the hell out of it. He didn't leave his feet. He didn't go flying by the guy. And he ends up getting a rebound one on nobody. That's the importance of staying on the floor. Anybody that we're playing against has got to be one, within one step of the, th the three-point line to be able to shoot effectively. So there's no sense going over top of anything out in here. You automatically see it and you go underneath it. That's got to be automatic out here. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. If we're going to play at that pace, I'm going to go watch television. We can't play at that pace. Bear Bryant used to say that uh, he worked like hell to prepare and spent Friday night thinking of about a thousand ways that the game could get screwed up on Saturday. And, and I'm a little bit like that, too. Uh, uh, I'm always really pleased, and, and because of my approach to mistakes, maybe a little bit surprised when we win. Good, John. Very good, John. Good possession. 
You often hear people ask, is Bob Knight just hanging around to see if he can pass Dean Smith's all-time wins record? And I'll tell you what, Dave, after being around him so much and seeing his enthusiasm for the game, his passion, the way he spends so much time paying attention to detail and film work and the way he teaches his team, there's no way he's just hanging around. He loves basketball and he loves teaching it. Yeah, you don't get the sense of it from watching that video that this is a guy who's just kind of counting the days. No way. No way. We're counting the wins, Andy, and you put 800 in perspective and it's a little frightening. It really is. Eddie 